Hi, everybody. This is Todd Krieger, and I am going to be doing a, a number of talks on gaslighting. Uh, the first one today is Healing from Gaslighting st Steps Towards Recovery. Um, I want you to listen if you have been in a relationship where you felt that your perceptions were being invalidated, that you felt like you were being victimized, but somehow it was turned around that you're the problem. And I want you to have a little bit of a guide here so um, that you'll be able to focus on your own healing and recovery. And so I'll be talking about the importance of therapy for these situations. I think it's really important for self-care and for rebuilding trust uh, in yourself and in others. So. Um, uh, so here we go. So firstly, gaslighting um, is common. Uh, it happens when you are made to feel like you're overreacting or you're the problem when you feel like a victim. And it's a real head scratcher for someone who's a victim because they tend to want to believe their partner. We have a tendency as children and even as we grow into adults to look for truth in what the other persons other people are saying now some people have grown up in families where their parents were incapable of being a good mirror a good reflector for the child experience for example okay for example in my own bringing up of my wife and I is bringing up of our two daughters. Even though I'm sure that we weren't perfect, we were pretty good though at when our kids had an emotion, even when they challenged us, that we were able to validate them, to honor them. If you grew up in a family where you were made to feel like what's wrong with you, if you ever try to express any disappointment or anger towards your parents, let's say, and your parents came back with, no, you're the problem, or you walked away feeling like you were the problem, you may be more inclined uh, to, as an adult, find the person who gaslights you as well, who doesn't validate your reality. Now, why does someone gaslight? Right? Because that's it's important in terms of find, you know having your own recovery you want to understand why people gaslight. And gaslighting, again, is when a person says you're the issue, when really they're the ones that are doing the issue. Um, I remember having a couple in my office where she was an emotional person, as some people are, and he was a very successful man. This was they were about to get married. It was gonna be both of their second marriages. And she um the the his he had two kids who really took advantage of him. And uh, you know, for example, one went to college, so she said, but she didn't attend classes and she took the money that her dad uh generously gave her to just party and to do other things, but never went to classes and didn't tell the dad until it was way later. I mean, she didn't tell, it was found out. And she was a very indulged child. And I think he felt a little guilty um, about the divorce, but also he had some narcissistic qualities and he liked to see his kids as perfect and didn't want to accept their flaws because in his eyes, they were an extension of him. So they also mistreated this fiance who, uh, you know, who was going to get married to their father and he, he would not confront them and back them up. So during a therapy session, she expressed some feelings about something that had happened where the daughter was the daughter and a son, but the daughter was very rude. And then so was the son. He says, and I was really disappointed that you didn't say anything. And he said, well, you know, if I'm not going to ever do it right by you, maybe 
we just won't get married. And maybe that's just what has to happen. And in my office, she got very upset, very emotional. She started to cry. Uh, she started to say, I can't believe you. I can't believe this. I can't believe you said that. I can't believe I, you know, you, you react this way when I tell you something I'm feeling. I can't believe it. She's really uh, unwinding. And he goes, do you see how crazy she gets? This is what I have to deal with. And I said, do you see what a crazy maker you are? He didn't like that very much. That was my last session with them. Yeah, they didn't come back. And he found, he found, well, actually, they asked me for a referral. So I gave him a female therapist who was a good therapist, but only, uh, but anyway, so a few weeks, she was a good therapist, but, but a few weeks later, I get a call from her. She goes, thanks for the referral. There was a release of information that they allowed me to talk with her, which was interesting. I didn't think he would, but he did. And so I was able to talk with her. You know, everything's confidential unless you get a release of information, uh, an authorization from the clients to talk. And she said, first thing she goes, boy, she is a doozy, isn't she? I said, she's emotional, but I, I noticed that she gets really triggered when he threatens her and he invalidates her. And I told her what happened in the office and she goes, oh yeah, I can see that. So uh, gaslighters are really good at convincing other people, even some therapists, that they're fine. And the other person just has mental issues, has emotional issues. So again, why do they do that? Well, in his case, and the people that gaslight in their cases, they don't want to look at themselves real honestly. They, want, they don't want to see their flaws. They need to be right. And in his case, he didn't want to see the flaws in his children and deal with that and confront them and maybe create this harmony but i think he also just want he wanted to you know he, was, he had a narcissistic part of him that wanted to see him and his kids as wonderful despite clear evidence to the country regarding the kids and even him uh, and so it's it's a challenge it's an uphill challenge for get victims of gaslighting because gaslighters are very very convincing to other people one woman I just saw today is dealing with an extreme gaslighting situation, getting divorced from this person who's really a social sociopathic gaslighter. And she's at an uphill battle because I find a lot of the legal system, the courts, the judges, the attorneys, they don't have a real keen eye for personality disorders and gaslighting. So it's a, it's a it's a real problem. So what do you do if you're a victim of gaslighting? How do you make steps towards recovery when you have this person who convinces you and others that you're the problem, even though some part of you, at times at least, in moments of clarity go, no, okay, this is what I see happening. And like I say, it happens to anybody, but it particularly happens when a person grew up in a family that was a very invalidating environment. Uh, you, you learn to distrust your own experience. So that becomes, that, then when you distrust your own experience as a child, you can become very vulnerable to be a victim of gaslighting as an adult. So the first thing I say to people that are in this situation is, take a breath and relax. I think that we need to do just basic self-care because we could get so stressed. A person who's being gaslighted feels so crazy. So I tell, you know, just breathe, soften your belly, calm yourself down. Because the calmer you allow yourself to be, the more you breathe deep into your belly and fully exhale, the more your... I'll say you're less likely to get so fuzzy that you could be as manipulatable as you were when you're in a stressed state. So it's very important to practice being in a calm state. And I know that's hard when oftentimes people like the client I saw today are not in a very 
a very calm situation. The environment is not calm at all. It's quite unfriendly. When you have a gaslighting person who's talking to you, married to you, or divorcing you in her case, and oftentimes, like I said, people around who may not always see it. So what I just said is a hint to what else you have to do. You got to find the people that could see it. You got to find, there are, there are groups that help victims of gaslighters, of gaslighting. Victims of gaslighting. So you could look that up and find that. I'm, I'm trying to think of one right now, but I'm not off the top of my head, even though it was just mentioned to me. Um, so um, it's it's imperative to find other people. You, it's very difficult to do this alone, especially if you grew up in a household where that was the case, where you were invalidated. Find friends. Find Now, here's where you need to find a therapist usually. When you're a victim of gaslighting, someone like myself can be very helpful, uh, can help you see past all the BS that you've been fed. I think that's very important. Another part of recovery is, because I'm saying, seek, get an environment that's supportive. That's very, very important. And also um, find a, a good therapist. I think that's important. The other thing, though, aside from those things where you're letting others help you, and I think that's very important, non-professional as well as professional, also it's important to imagine if you had a child that you saw going through this, this invalidating experience that made you made made the child feel like what they uh, had to say wasn't real. Like imagine a child who was being screamed at and yelled at, and the child is upset, and the parent says it's because you're such a bad kid. Okay, not the truth. Is because the parent in this example is terrible at regulating their emotions. But they can't see it or they don't want to see it, so they scapegoat the child. And imagine if that was a child that was and you saw that and you love that child, you care about that child, and you want to liberate that child from the delusion that it's their fault. And so I want you to imagine that child, what you would do with that child. And that's what I want you to do with that part of you that feels crazy. That you need to talk to that part of you as if it was your child that was going through what you're going through. What would you say? What would you do? How would you soothe her or him? What words would you say? And ask yourself, how would you want that child to receive your help? And why that's important too is I find sometimes people that are victims of gaslighting have a very hard time receiving help. There might be a number of reasons for that. I think one is people that are victims of gaslighting, they still want to see the gaslighter as good. They do. They have a hard time giving up the fantasy. And if they really hear the loving messages that they would give that child, it would mean that maybe that person's not good for me and I have to accept that. I'm in a very invalidating situation. I'm with a person who's very limited and can't see their own limitations, their own mental health issues, their own inability to mature and own up and grow up. And they put it all on me because I make them feel uncomfortable. That's what you'd say to that child. You'd know that. You'd see it. You could see that the child is being victimized because the adult in your imagined scenario can't handle the truth. Okay, so you want to feel that way, be that way, stand up 
for that child. Stand up. So you want to stand up for that child. You want to get your support when people who validate you. You want to get therapy. You want to breathe. You want to do everything you can because it's kind of a fight of your life to get moving. To you know what happens with people that gaslighters, victims of gaslighters, is they eventually sometimes give up. It's just they they just the other person's so convincing that they just give up fighting for their own perceptions, their own experiences, and they shut down. And then they get even more taken advantage of. So you got to surround yourself with people and do as much as you can with your own self to get into action, self-compassionate action. Self-compassion can be kind, it could be saying, may I just be kind to myself? May I just allow myself to have peace? Self-compassion could look fierce if needed. Fierce. Taking care of yourself. Getting into action. Leaving the situation. Uh, the woman in this case, like, get that attorney. You know, whatever it takes. Even if part of you doesn't want to fight the fight because uh, there's a, it, it would just be easy to give in and satisfy the gaslighter. You don't want to do that because it's an expense to you that is so high. It's just a high price to pay for adapting to a gaslighter. So it's accepting that that relationship is over. The only way it's not over with that person is if that person gets it somehow, which won't happen. It usually doesn't happen anyway. But it only will happen if you fight for you and you train that person to realize that you cannot be manipulated. So it's standing up. It's wanting freedom from manipulation as much as if somebody pushed you under the water and you were fighting for air. You want to fight for that freedom. Being, you know, find that part of you that is sick and tired of being manipulated. Find your people to help you with that. I know I'm repeating myself, but it, it can be such a challenge that I'm, I'm, I'm speaking in many ways the way I spoke to my client earlier in terms of know that you matter. Know that you're beautiful inside and out. Know that you're precious and that you deserve much better treatment. And then the next step of recovery is being open to the uncertainty, you know, taking that leap, getting out from under this toxicity. You know, sometimes people will stay in it because it's familiar and miserable versus leaping out because the feeling is, well, what if there's no safety net and I fall and I crash? But, you know, it just doesn't happen. When you are, you keep moving and you keep trusting yourself, even if you go through some hurdles, even if you get knocked around because sometimes the world isn't set up. It's easy for people that are victims of gaslighting. Ultimately, you will rise. Ultimately, you will have the freedom to be yourself again. Because that's what happens. Guest lighters uh, make their victims lose their zest for life. So you need to say, oh, no, 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 no. I'm done with that. So it, it's, uh, it's good to have your environment externally. You also want to prepare your internal environment. Imagine what you'd say to a child that you love that was going through what you were going through and then and do everything for self-care that you could do, not just the breathing. What can I, what, you know, treat me like I'm valuable, even if not my gaslighting partner doesn't or gaslighting whoever, gaslighting parent. I will treat myself uh, 
like I matter, I'm going to exercise. I'm going to, I'm going to just make good choices. I'm just take care of my physical well-being, mental well-being. And that's how you start to build trust in yourself again, because you, you are trusting you because you're going in a direction of wealth, well, well-being. Well, wealth it can lead to wealth, uh, definitely emotional wealth, but it might even lead to financial wealth. But well-being, uh, moving towards well-being, being committed to it, gathering up all your people and all your will. So. And ultimately, you start to realize that some people can be trusted, but you've got to learn to discriminate, and you'll get better and better at it as you practice living from that place of self-compassion, of being kind to yourself, being fierce when needed, because you're fighting for yourself. You're fighting for your right to exist. You're fighting for your, your experiences to matter. So thanks for listening. This is Todd Krieger, making the world safe for love.